Hi, it's Diane, and I'm very excited for my new book, Daily Meditations for Visionary Leaders. Check it out on my website, visionsapplied.com forward slash meditation. Now, on with the show. If you are listening to this podcast, it means you are searching. Searching for someone who understands you, someone who gets you. You are yearning to be understood and to belong. Welcome to the Someone Gets Me podcast, where we help smart, talented, and sensitive people navigate an often insensitive world. Let's welcome your host, ambassador, author, speaker, and mentor, Diane Allen. Diane has the experience and knowledge to educate and inspire as she has been there and understands your unique intensities and their challenges. Hi, everybody. It's Diane again with Someone Gets Me. And today I have another exciting interview for you. The person who we're going to speak to today is an amazing coach and professional woman. The thing that I love about her most is that she focuses on career development in a bigger picture, like a global kind of picture, not just little. She has an amazing book out and she lives in Tampa, Florida, really close to where I live. And so I've had a chance to hang out with her in person and I invited her to be in my book, The Daily Meditations for Visionary Leaders, because in fact, she is a visionary leader and she is a forerunner beyond her own understanding. That's how wise she is. She's amazing. Professionally, she helps people with their careers and leadership and helps companies and individuals all come together in a way that makes it so that working in an effective career is perfect for her people. So I'd like to welcome to the show today my good friend and amazing, inspiring author and teacher and coach, Kiana Wilson. Welcome. Thank you, Diane. I'm extremely excited to be here. A little jitters as can uh, be understood at this point, but thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. And you'll see that me and my audience, we're all just so loving and kind, and this is a really safe place, so you'll be fine. And what I'd like to start out with is something that's kind of simple, because a lot of people are trying to kind of find their way in the world, you know, like, what do I do and where do I get started? And I'm sure you run into that a lot where there's people who come to you and say, I don't know, Kiana, I don't even know where to start. And I'm sure you have some wisdom about what are maybe some questions or ways somebody could think to kind of get started on how to find their right vocation. You know, maybe they're underemployed or, or they're getting out of school and they don't even know what to do. What would be a good first couple steps to kind of prime the pump a little bit? Well, that's an excellent question. Um, I actually have a career positioning worksheet that I, I utilize when working with a lot of my coaching clients and student mentees. And this sheet basically um, outlines some, some core questions. So what are your... Um, what are your values? What are some of your interests and strengths? Uh, areas for improvement? I know some of these things are standard, but we go a little further deeper and we start talking about what's your sharpness. So this is where your competitive edge comes in. This is where you uh, bring the real bang for your buck to employers or to potential partners in the future. And so as we go through this list, we basically highlight some of these core areas and the whole purpose is for individuals to really gain a deeper understanding of who they are. And that's really where you start in this process. You want to start with identifying who am I? What, what are the main components that, uh, that, I, that make me who I am, that make me unique, make me special, um, that really adds value in this world? And once you start to uncover those things, then you can start working on developing a strategy as to how to move forward in your career or professional development efforts. That's really interesting because what you're saying is that people need to start on the inside and then bring it out. And I think we're so reinforced in our culture, our Western society, to see what everybody else out there is doing or what I think they want to hear and trying to change and make ourselves into something that's not that authentic, but hopefully will sell whatever the event, the situation is, you know, get the employer to hire me or whatever. And so your strategy is the opposite, which is also my strategy of look within and let it show up in the world in a more effective way. That's how you're successful, right? That's what you're saying, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Because what I've found is that people who start outwardly um, as they approach their career, they tend to be in a state of just um, confusion or a state of, of being lost and directionless. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that they're misaligned. So if you start from the inside and work your, your way out, then you can ensure that that core is strong and that the steps that you're taking are aligned with who you really are. I love that. That is so important. And so for all of you listening and each one of you, take a second and like, think about it. What's your core values? What, what drives you, right? What is it that makes you show up every day in the world? And are you aligned? Because I think that that's very important. And, and I think often overlooked in our fast paced society. And so you might want to do that. And now I have another part. You mentioned the sharper part. What's sharp about you, I think is how you said it. I know that your website is a sharper you.com and I love that name. And so when you say that, like what's sharp about you, can you kind of elaborate that a little bit about how you see that or what that is exactly? Yes. So um, it's actually what is your sharpness um, when sharpness. you're going through, through that particular um, document. And it's really, again, related to what, um, what do you uniquely bring to the table? So what is it that you do that is effortless, that you're just phenomenal at, whether that is communicating with others, building relationships, um, solving problems, uh, working on uh, special projects, whatever that may be, we all have a sharpness that we bring to the table. So really identifying that is going to be one of your greatest assets as you're looking to move forward in your career and professional development efforts um, because it's really what positions you above or beyond some of the general uh, candidates that may be out there. So um, this is really all uniquely about who you are again and what is that spark, that one thing or maybe mm -hmm. two or three that you really bring forth. And so doing that when you're somebody that has a lot of potential, right? Because you work with the people that have a mm -hmm. lot of potential that want to have that extra edge, that want to bring their extra brightness and their sharpness to the table, right? And so that's where you come from and that's where you excel because you do that too. So when mm -hmm. you have a creative block or when you're yourself working on things and helping your people and you're on these committees and boards and you're very active, and I'm sure you have days where you're just not as on as other days. What are the things you do to help kind of um, refill yourself, you know, and get recharged up and nurture yourself? Or, or what are the things you do so that you can be all you're meant to be? So that's, that's a very interesting question. Um, some of the things that I do, for example, we all have those days where we're just drained and we're, we're pulled in a thousand different directions. And I usually go back to those core uh, areas that I've identified. So for example, I am an extrovert. I love communicating with other people. So when I'm just having one of those hectic days, I go and I pull from my social circle and I utilize that as a means to recharge. As I'm thinking about those that are listening, um, identifying those areas where you are at your best, those areas where you naturally excel, and just ensuring that you incorporate that into your, your daily or weekly routine, and at the very least, understand how you can uh, fill those needs and what, it, what steps you would need to take so that when you are having those challenging days, you can just plug in to those areas and recharge. Right. So I'm an introvert. And when I'm all <laughs> frazzled and wide, wide open, you know, or spent a little bit, and my introverted, introverted self wants to go be by myself and maybe meditate or take a hot bath or read a good book for a little while, and then I surface again, where an extrovert like you, Kiana, would go and find your social friends and be around safe, fun people where that energy recharges you. And so it's two, we're, we're like the opposites in that way, yet we both realize how important it is to recharge. So for all of us, I think it's a good idea to know what that is and then honor that. If, you, if it's a social circle or if it's being by yourself, and for some friends, they're ambiverts, they can do either, and understanding that that's the way it is, right? So you have to take care of yourself first if you're going to be successful, right? 
and you have to have a focus and clarity of goals and all of those kinds of things. I kind of imagine that that's central in a lot of the conversations you have with people is getting more and more clear and what are your goals and how are you doing it and all of that. And the question I have kind of is alongside that maybe of, I'm sure you work with people who have these great visions and are very imaginative, can really see things that are much greater that probably have a lot of steps to get there and they may not be able to see the steps. So they might be afraid of the vision or they might want to go right to the vision and forget that they're steps <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> and I'm sure you deal with that a lot because you're in the entrepreneur space and that's where, how a lot of entrepreneurs work and they need somebody that kind of grounds them and keeps them going. And I believe you're very good at that. So if you were going to ground a visionary and help them kind of get going and they have their clarity and everything, they're just way out there. How would you help bring them to the present time? Like what, what is something that maybe a listener could do if they were like having a hard time being focused on like what's next kind of thing? What is it? Do you have something you teach that has to do with that? Well, I would say just off the top of my head, um, I always say that clarity comes through action. And so if we're thinking about it from that perspective, then I would work with these individuals to put some action items in place. Now, if, you're, if they are a, a big visionary and they're just ready to jump in and go ahead first, then that's where the structure process comes in, um, you know, through my coaching services, um, as well as some of my training programs where we take things from a very holistic standpoint. We sort of slow down the process a little to make sure that the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. But along the way, we're taking actionable steps. And the reason why this is so important is because, as is the case with a lot of people, once you start taking that action, things start to unfold. Um, things that you may not have considered, um, some good, some maybe not so good. So the purpose in doing this is to really start to, to carve out that path for yourself and decide whether or not you want to continue down that path or maybe you might want to uh, tweak a few things. And that's usually how I start with big thinkers, um, very driven people, is that I, I purposely slow down the process and put them into action state as opposed to um, just that mental state thinking through every step and getting gun ho. Um, and, that, and that usually shifts the process a little bit um, because again, as they're taking steps, small or big, they start to um, uncover and realize some things that they had never considered prior to beginning the process with me. Right, unintended consequences. You know, we can have all of the vision and everything. And then once we start taking action, things change a lot, right? And and so I think that's a really good point that you bring up is that take some action, get started and see where it leads because sometimes the action will bring an unintended consequence that may not be so hot, but there also could be an unintended consequence that sets off a few light bulbs and some inspiration that mm -hmm. you couldn't see otherwise, right? So it's to be open to that, to the outcome, whatever it is. So now I would like um, to shift a little bit, talk a little bit about when you, because you're on boards and you help in the community and you're very active in a very leadership way as a visionary and you're young. And so how is that? How, how, do, you, how are you, do you experience that being a visionary who's wise yet also young? And I'm sure you've had to negotiate some situations where people might go, well, she's young. What does she know? Or, you know, those kinds of maybe even passive things. And, and I know you have a lot of gifts and each one of our listeners has a lot of gifts. Sometimes people get lost in how they get received. I know you're really good at it. What are some things that if somebody was going, well, I don't know if they'll take me seriously or I, you know, I want to go out there, but I'm not really sure. You personally demonstrate that. So I would love it if you would share maybe a couple stories or some things of that you've personally have done and achieved or broken through with whatever that have been able to poise you for being a leader in our community at such a young age? Absolutely. Um, so again, another loaded question. Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> what I would say is, um, you know, the biggest thing is to show up. All right. So a lot of times 
you know, just, just the fear of the unknown prevents so many people from just showing up. As I'm thinking about my own career path, I make it a point to always be at the table. Whether that is, you know, in an environment where there are senior leaders there that intimidate the heck out of me, or people that are, we would consider big wigs um, in our lingo, I still show up. Now, I may not always say anything because, again, some of these situations may require for me to just sit and listen and learn. And it's important to be able to um, understand there's a time for listening and there's a time for speaking. And so that brings me to my next point. Always have a voice. Now, there's some times where your voice may be um, passive, um, it may be active, depending on the situations, but always have a voice. So if you are out here um, looking at different committees or organizations to be a part of, um, be sure that you complete the surveys that are sent out, um, go to the, the committee meetings and offer some ideas or suggestions. The key here is that you want people to really um, look at you as a value added contributor. And if you are not using your voice, they have no idea who you are. On a lot of committees, um, especially one in particular that I'm a part of, there's about 40 or 50 of us um, that may show up at any given, any given month and it's easy to get lost in the process. So I make it a point to always show up, have a voice and I'm also very clear about what my expectations are for joining that committee or that organization or whatever that movement may be. And that's part of, of, of my voice. Thinking about a situation where this has worked well for me, unexpectedly, should I say, worked well for me, I decided last year to join a, a couple committees and it was just mostly just to sort of test the waters a little bit. And in the beginning of, of attending those meetings, I would certainly show up, but I was very quiet. I was sort of in the corner. Um, a lot of topics we were talking about were just burning in the inside because I had so much that I wanted to contribute, yet I was feeling a little hesitant. And, you know, I'm sitting at this table with these people that have so much more experience than me. They are visible in the community. They are leaders. And so I sort of um, minimized my voice. And what ended up happening was I, I grew frustrated. I started to question whether the organization was a fit for me. And I sort of went down that entire process. And then I thought to myself, well, what's the whole purpose of me being on this committee if I'm not voicing uh, my opinions about the topics and if I'm not actively contributing to the organization? And so I had to do a little shift in my mindset to say, you know what, these people in this room, they are leaders. They are doing wonderful things in the community, but so am I. And so when you really can, when you really take the time to not necessarily compare yourself, because I feel like that's an area where people get hung up on a lot is really comparing their worth to others. Um, but when you really get set that aside when you really set those things aside at the core we're all there for a common purpose a common goal and each of our voices matter we all have something valuable to contribute once i was able to really understand that i became a different board member i mean i was active i was leading different initiatives and i actually found a, a perfect alignment um, with what i was doing so again just reiterating um, show up have a voice and um, definitely be active. Add some value to the committee and let them know exactly what you hope to gain and also what you're able to contribute. Exactly. That's, that's perfectly well said, you know, because I think that that happens for a lot of people. And I think the whole idea of people not being understood, the Someone Gets Me podcast, right, is <laughs> learning how to use our voice. And each one of you out there using your voice and showing up and being present and being aligned and standing up for things. And just because there might be other people, the big wigs out there or other people who maybe are very verbal, doesn't mean your ideas are bad and, and they're important and they're valuable. Otherwise, they wouldn't be burning within you. That burning within you is, is that kind of spiritual message saying, here, say it, say it, say it, say it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so... Thankfully, you listened, right? And so I think that's very sage advice 
and a good thing to do because I think it's important for us as leaders to be present in the community and be present in our world and take a stand wh- however that looks. Mm-hmm. And I know that I see you active all the time and and that's one of your gifts is to be able to do that with clarity and precision and and a really nice attitude and a great smile. You know, I never see I never see you walking around the community or or saying hateful mean things. It just doesn't come out of you. Every cell of your being is compassionate and focused and clear and kind. You know, you get more flies with honey than you do vinegar, right? And <laughs> and 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 that's how I experience you and that's how how you are perceived in our community as somebody who is a leader with a smile on your face. And the only other person that comes to mind when I think of leader with smile on their face is Richard Branson because he's always smiling too. And it's kind of reminds me of you. So I think that was really, really amazing advice that you just shared. So what are some things you like to do for fun? Well, you know, this is a very timely question because I, <laughs> Explored this recently. Um, I had gotten into a state of work, work, work uh, for so long that I had to pause for a moment and say, where's the fun at? Some of the things that I've rediscovered, which I'm happy to rediscover these things, are um, traveling. I absolutely love traveling, um, just getting away, whether it's a short weekend vacation or, uh, you know, traveling abroad and, and experiencing different culture. And then locally, just hanging out with friends, going to the beach. I'm in Florida. We have great weather most of the time. So going to the beach, socializing, having drinks, these are all the things that I really enjoy doing. And hopefully I can incorporate more of this into my my weeks and, and months ahead. So where's your favorite place to travel abroad? Well, I haven't gone a lot of places, but recently in December, I went to Paris and I had a ball in Paris. And so now I have this whole travel bug itch type of thing and I can't sit still. So I'm online all the time looking for other destinations to go. But I, I would say, even though I went to Paris, one of the most um, enlightening uh, trips that I, I've taken in my lifetime has been to India. That was a true culture shock for me, uh, just in every way that you can imagine. Yet, I really enjoyed the experience. So I'm always looking for um, different opportunities to just sort of learn a different way of life. Um, You know, in Paris, things were a lot slower and people were laid back and everyone ate bread and, you know, drank wine. And it was just so fabulous, you know, And and I look forward for opportunities to do things like that. Of course, I can't do it as much as I like because I'm an adult and I have responsibilities, but I hope to definitely incorporate more of that going forward. So y'all just heard it. If you've been a cool place that you think Kiana would like to go try, check the show notes because I'm going to put her email and website in there so you can send her your ideas because you never know, probably one of you has been to a really great place that she would dig because she likes having that adventure. You heard it, India and Paris and all over. I mean, there's lots of cool places that somebody like Kiana would really appreciate. So if you've traveled someplace like that, shoot her an email and give her the suggestion so that then she can have something else to research online when she's checking things out. It'd be (laughs) hilarious, right? You never know. The best idea could come from a listener, you know? Yes. it, it always comes from an interesting place, and, and there's great listeners to this podcast, so I'm sure we're going to get some really good ideas. We're coming down to kind of near where we want to start um, talking a little bit about things you do, offer professionally. Um, if you do, I know you do coaching with people, but if you do, do you do virtual coaching with people and things like that, or mostly in person? Yeah, it's, it's actually primarily virtual coaching and some in person coaching, as well as uh, training workshops for uh, corporate entities, Um, not as many for for individuals, but I also work with a lot of nonprofits. Wonderful. So we have corporate, nonprofit, and virtual services that you offer. And I'm sure we can find it on asharperu.com, right? That's where all the information is, how to reach you. And And that's Kiana's website. And one thing I know about her is that if you're listening to us, and you hear her voice and you hear how alive and, and awake and with it she is. And she's somebody that you're drawn to, to kind of pick her brain or work with her or 
have her come to your nonprofit or your company to really spark and inspire the richness and depth of people, then she's your person. Checking her website out and emailing her would be really in your benefit. I think it would be your best idea, actually. And that's my two cents worth. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my personal opinion. And, then, and that's just the way it is. Cause I only work with gifted people and I work with people that, um, you know, sometimes it's, it's a little harder for them to get going or get started or, or sometimes to feel like they belong. You're very good at helping people see that they have value and they do belong and, and how to make it feel real to them. And so the last and final big question that I have for you is if, you could create the most amazing experiential kind of retreat for yourself to charge yourself up and kind of take yourself to the next level. What kind of retreat would you create for you? Oh gosh, this just takes me in like la la land right now. <laughs> um, well, I, you know, it has to be a retreat where I'm unplugged, which that will be a huge challenge for me as a small business owner and, you know, as active as I am, I'm always stuck uh, with my devices. So first and foremost, I would need to be unplugged. I would need to be by some water. I absolutely love being by the water, on the water, sometimes in the water, just depends, and sunshine, palm trees, um, very distant. I need to be hours and hours away. You know, I, I, one of the things I thought about, there's an island in Thailand. And I was reading about this island and I was like, oh, this would be a perfect retreat. There's hammocks, there's massages, good food, great people, a lot of culture, a lot of um, first time experiences for myself and a lot of adventure. So, I, I mean, again, I know I'm using all these descriptive words and not necessarily painting a full, complete picture, but if all of those things were um, somehow to come into alignment with each other, that would be an ideal retreat for me. And no longer than about, I would say, seven days. Um, I'm one of those people that get homesick. So after seven days, I'm like, okay, enough. I need to break it up a little bit. I need to get back to my reality. And then... Hopefully soon I can have another break. So that would be ideal for me. That is, I got the picture. I loved it. Okay. <laughs> and, and I asked that question and of course you didn't know that question was coming and I didn't either until a little bit before I thought of it because you're a visionary and visionaries have that unique ability to dial into the picture in their head and mm -hmm. present it or verbalize it or write it or whatever in a way others can see along with them. And I'm sure you all heard it and you were on that island in Thailand with Kiana for those few minutes and probably wondering the name of the island, right? <laughs> and, and that's a gift. And that is an example of Kiana allowing her sharpness, her brilliance to come through and not only benefit her own life, but really touch in a magical way all the people around her from the committees she's on, the nonprofits she serves, her clients, the company she teaches in, all of it. All of us are touched by that ability she has to vision something and then put it out there for the consumption and the beauty and the gift of everyone else. And so I wanted a real life spur of the moment example for all of you, that that skill that she has developed and that, that she has really honed is a valuable one. And I'll bet you have it too. And I'll bet that a little bit of practice and a little bit of support will yield for you all the results you've ever wanted. And so Kiana is just like all of us, making it, running her business, doing her thing, following her heart, and she's strategic about it. Visionary people can be strategic, and strategic people can be visionaries. They're not mutually exclusive. And I wanted you all to have that, that experience of it live and in person because I think it's a very valuable thing. And you saw how quickly she came up with the answer. We didn't have to wait 35 minutes for it, it <laughs> because it's there. And thank you. So is there anything that you would, else you would like to say to our wonderful listeners or anything you'd like to um, say as a parting comment, maybe, 
and before we close the show, and of course, I'm going to put your website and your contact information, your social media, and all of that in the show notes. So they will be linked. You guys will be linked directly to Kiana. You can click in the show notes and let her know you heard her on the show or tell her where she should travel next or whatever it is so she knows that all of her time that she's so graciously giving us today is valuable to you. But is there anything else you'd like to say? Well, I just wanted to share with the audience, especially those that are in the Tampa Bay area, I do have a, another book signing coming up on March the 24th at the Brandon Barnes & Noble. Really excited about that. It's from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. So anyone in the area, please stop by, say hi, laugh with me, take some pictures. I'm not opposed to shaking hands and kissing babies. All right. So come by and see me. I will be there from 12 to 2. Also, as just a final thought, um, Diane, I know in, in your book, there's a, uh, a quote that you used. And uh, one of the quotes that, well, it's a quote that I shared with you. And the quote is, success is a mindset, not a goal. And I just want to leave listeners with that thought, because oftentimes when I'm working with young professionals or even more experienced professionals, um, they, they tend to question how successful they are. And they tend to do this in a more negative way as opposed to being optimistic and positive about their journey. And so if you keep in mind that Success is a mindset. It's not a goal. It's not something that, you know, you should seek to attain, honestly. It's within you. It's who you are. It is part of your core being. And if you keep this in mind, this will help you feel like a success each and every day. Even though I have challenges as a small business owner, I have challenges as a committee meeting, I have challenges as a parent, and the list goes on. There's not one day that goes by that I ever doubt whether or not I'm successful. Because as far as I'm concerned, every step that I take each day and the effort that I utilize to keep pushing towards my goals, I've already proven that I'm successful and I'll continue to do so. So just keep that in mind for all of you out there that may be questioning that, it's a mindset. So choose to really adapt that mindset and you'll see your world unfolding in a positive way around you. That's brilliant. Success is a mindset. It's not a goal. And that is the quote, one of them from you in my book, Daily Meditations for Visionary Leaders. So if you resonate with that, pick up a, up a copy of the book and go see Kiana and take the opportunity to really connect with her. It would be really worth your while. So as we close this episode of Someone Gets Me, thank you for listening. And remember to keep your face toward the sun because the shadows fall behind you. Live with all of your brilliance out loud. And remember that every step you take is on purpose with a purpose. See you next time. Are you tired of searching for someone who understands you? Join our Facebook group, Someone Gets Me. In this group, you will be able to connect with others who are intense, sensitive, smart, talented, and wanting to be understood. Diane shares her insights and teachings, and you can connect with others. Join today.